welcome my beautifully artistic friends in Monet Cafe. Today I'm going to be showing you how to organize your pastels in a Heilman pastel box. These are the boxes, they come in various sizes, but I'm going to be talking about way more than just this box and sharing more information. So whether you're just making a studio palette or a to-go travel palette, this is going to help you out. But before you go out and spend a lot of money on one of the choices for a box, whether it be a studio box storage system or a traveling storage system, why not get started like some of our members in our Facebook group, Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook, and uh, get creative and find wonderful, inexpensive ways to store your pastels with things you might even already have in your home. Um, check out some of these here. I'm just going to click on a few of these. Um, so this is just a neat way we can look at various things. I have an album in our group where people share their storage system. This one's actually very, oh, this one, actually, this is mine. <laughs> I was going to say this is similar to mine. I actually, years ago, had gotten a really neat little box that had drawers in it, and they can be taken out. And so the drawers can be moved, moved around, moved over to wherever I'm working. And so that comes in handy. Um, this, uh, let's see here, this might be something that someone, yeah, this is uh, my dear sister and friend, Becky, um, who looks like she might have uh, improvised with this system here. I like it. Um, look at this. How creative is that? Talk about using drawers like I did. Uh, this is Becky's again. This, these are the drawers that she keeps those trays in that showed in the previous picture. So I'm just going to flip through some of these so you can see that, you know, you don't have to start expensive. You can just get, you know, whatever you have around the house. It could be something like this where you don't have a whole lot of pastels yet, but you uh, can organize them in a simple single tray system like this. And whether you have a whole lot of pastels like this <laughs> or just a few, um, this is something actually I love the system. Uh, I don't know if someone ever invented it before I did, but I I was trying to find a way to put my pastels in a color wheel form. And uh, this is actually another friend of mine, Linda, who um, she um, did the same thing with an appetizer tray. I just used one from Publix. That's a local grocery store that I have. But wherever you could get a little plastic tray, um, I did like she did here and just put the paper towels in the bottom. But see the color wheel right here on top? Actually, that's an opening underneath there too where I put my neutral colors. Um, but what a neat and inexpensive pastel palette. I still use that one to this day. So even if you're just getting started with your pastel supplies um, I worked for so long with very limited pastels I think actually I still have a pretty limited uh, supply um, in spite of the fact that I've been painting for years so uh, get encouraged don't get intimidated some people have um, way more than I'll ever have but uh, just get excited and have fun and if you want to join our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook that's a really great way to get ideas we have all kinds of helpful information so anyway oh I just love looking at these I can't stop ah <laughs> anyway um, all right let's get back to uh, how we can organize the, these whether it be in a to-go palette travel palette or a studio palette now here is an image from the Heilman website showing some of their various sizes. I don't think this is all of the sizes, but it's quite a few of them. I actually chose the backpack size. I believe that it's uh, good for me because I want I don't want it to be too heavy to carry for traveling, but I don't want it so small. They have smaller options than this one that I can't fit enough pastels. So uh, they do make, here's a larger one here, and you see you can use it for various things. This one has some pan pastels in it. This one is jam-packed full of pastels here, but it's kind of the same system with the three on the side. Now I wanted to pause here for a minute and show you some of the prices and the different sizes. You can get on the website and look at this yourself but this just is going to give you a general idea and basically you can see here that from the uh, top row there the single sketch box 150 ranging all the way up to the large slim of 345 so they can get expensive I thought I'd also share here another option is the Dakota pastel boxes and you can see these prices are less I I happen to really like the Howman box even though it's more expensive um, but this one would definitely suffice I'm, I'm actually surprised I never bought one over the years 
Now here's just a quick look at my boxes that I showed before in the drawers that I have on a shelf in my studio. But now I'm going to be not only taking those boxes, but also I have bought three new sets of pastels um, since um, gosh, in the past like four months or so, and I haven't even gotten to organize them yet. Now this is a Jack Richeson assorted set of 60. Boy, that's like a tongue twister, assorted set of 60. And it's the, um, <clears throat> it's the half sticks, which I really like because you get a lot more bang for your buck when you get the half sticks versus the full sticks. Um, they go a long way anyway, so uh, why not go ahead and if you're going to spend the money, get more colors uh, versus larger pastels. Now, this is the first time I've tried this technique. Uh, I really don't like when pastels come with labels on them because that's a pain you got to take all these labels off and uh, I thought it might be easier just to get a little exacto blade and be very delicate and it actually worked really good with the Jack Richesons the labels are very thin and the pastels are soft but not so soft that they fall apart but you're gonna see me doing the same technique to another set of pastels which are the great Americans they are very soft so I had to be even more careful with them getting the labels off um, now, I did go ahead and take a picture of these pastels before taking the labels off. I like to have, uh, with all of the numbers showing, so uh, because I like to have a reference as to which colors there are. Now, that technique worked really great on the Jack Richesons, but these uh, Great Americans, again, are very, very soft. So if you choose to do this with any Great Americans, see some of those are crumbling. You've got to be really careful. Of course, they're so soft, they crumble even when you're... Uh, to a degree even when you're just trying to peel the labels off so all in all my um, exacto blade system did work it was a lot faster but you've got to be so careful make sure you have a very sharp exacto blade now this set again is the great american <clears throat> plein air uh, assortment i believe and it's by uh, artist richard uh, McDaniel. I always want to say Richard McKinley because I love his pastel work as well. And I've been playing around with this set a little bit. Um, not a lot, obviously. You can see I haven't even taken the labels off of many of them. But I think I'm going to really love this brand of pastels, although I have, you'll see in the video, I did uh, integrate them into the travel box. Uh, the Hellman box and I know that sometimes the softer pastels get a little more crumbly uh, you know so be careful carrying your box around and if you're just starting um, of course we love the softies the advantage to soft pastels is they go on even when you've got a lot of layers down soft pastels are great at the end but sometimes a medium to soft pastel is a good choice as a beginner such as Mount Vision now I've got all of the papers off the pastels. That one set, the Sennelier, uh, I was excited. They don't have labels on them. That is really awesome. And uh, uh, it's they're an also a very soft pastel, which I love. It's one of my favorite brands. Oh, there's so many that are my favorites, it's hard to choose. <laughs> but I wanted to show you real quick the sheet that I mentioned. Uh, this has to do with those great Americans right behind the sheet there. I took the picture and I actually also uh, made a little mark because pictures don't always portray the color exactly. So I made a little mark as a reference if I need to order that color again. All right, so here we go. It's time to get started. Now I'm just going to open up the box basically and kind of give you an idea of how it functions. That right there is a little um, uh, screw-in port there where if you have a tripod and your little uh, tripod adapter like that you put on the bottom of your camera to put it in, that will fit in there and you can basically just put this on a tripod. Um, this, it does come with a strap, which is nice, you know, to carry it and also a key to lock up your precious babies. Not that many people would want to get in there and get pastels, but I don't know if you're around some of our Monet Cafe people, watch out, teasing. You guys are great. Y'all would never steal someone's pastels. Anyway, um, so you see this system is um, basically these pieces of board that have this n wonderful foam on the insides of the board and on the bottoms. Now you do have the little um, uh, dividers in there to divide it up, which is handy um, to keep your pastels separate, but you can take them 
them out too. They are removable. Now the importance of that foam is that it keeps your pastels very compact because the main thing you don't want to happen when carrying this box around is for them to shuffle around and, and bump up against each other. Now this is the easel uh, that or that comes that I'm sorry it does not come with it. You have to buy it separately. I believe I got the uh 12 inch i can't even remember the sizes i got the medium size one there is a smaller one um sometimes i do work that's like a 11 by 14 painting so i thought this one was good for me i also got the little accessory that is the pastel box that you put on the side so basically with this box you are all set and good to go for any plein air painting uh, or just, you know, you don't even have to be going far. Sometimes I like to paint in my backyard <laughs> and uh, you're definitely ready to go with these items. I thought I would show you my strategy. It's actually a system I've been using for years. Uh, I happen to like this picture that I found of artist Karen Margulis in her uh, pastel box. It's, it's kind of the same system that I use. I base mine just on the color wheel, really. And uh, like you saw in the one picture early on with like the appetizer tray in a circle. Uh, this is not in a circle, but it, it follows the color wheel. Watch as I, I'm gonna zoom in on this so you can see it better. Now here I've flipped the color wheel over. It actually works better for this uh, demonstration. Notice the warm greens on the on that on that little uh, box there. The warm greens, then it goes to cool, then it goes to finally to your purpley blues, and uh, then eventually past your purples to your pinks, past your pinks to your reds and your oranges, and finally to yellow. And if you were to fold that around, you'd go right back to the yellowy greens again. And now I'm pointing out here how they are in a order of value. Notice if you squint your eyes, you see that goes from light to dark. And that's just the best way to work. So now it's time to get started and filling this up. And I'm going to, of course, start uh, with the warm greens on the far right side there. So what I'm going to be doing is grabbing my studio, little studio drawers that I have, and um, also integrating in like I said the other pastels that I've purchased the other sets so I I love to work with uh, smaller pastels not teeny but I often break my pastels so it kind of works out in my favor because I get to leave some in my studio palette and put some in a travel set like this um, so uh, I'm basically just gonna be if I have any duplicates in my studio set I will put them in here or or break them if they're larger so uh, it's time to get started now again we're gonna go light to dark going with the warmer greens and uh, then gradually working to cooler on the far right is where the the warmer the more yellow like I said before if you were to wrap that around in a circle if you kept going to the right you'd end up back at the yellows again. So these are gonna be my more yellowy greens on the right, and then uh, going up in value, light to dark as you go up. But then as you go left, they're gonna get cooler, moving more towards cool greens, um, and then eventually towards um, warm blues. <laughs> and I know this, if that doesn't make sense, warm blues, uh, I have another video that actually describes the color temperature of colors. Sometimes people have had a hard time with this and I've, I really like the fact that um, I've had some people comment that wow I never got it until this one particular video I did. I think I've switched yeah I'm gonna actually be doing the lighter ones up towards the top there working my way down towards the dark ones if you see me moving things around a little bit there. But um, color temperature is just something that once once it clicks you're like aha and it's really the color wheel that uh, that helped me to truly understand color temperature oh and I wanted to mention I have um, made some playlists finally here in our YouTube channel which should make it much easier for you guys to find things I have a lot of videos that talk about color and value and color temperature and composition sometimes with composition and I've grouped them all into a playlist so if you go to my our, our I like to say our YouTube channel and you go to the section that's um, I think it's in the tab right next to videos it says playlists um, the one with color and value it, it has gosh maybe between 10 and 
16 videos, something like that. Then I have some with underpaintings. Um, so it's going to be much more helpful to you guys to be able to quickly find them rather than scrolling through all of the videos individually trying to find um, just a particular topic or subject. So I've got a, a little bit more organization to do with the playlist, from, but from here on out, I'll just simply add the video every time I upload one to the appropriate playlist. This one, of course, is going to be uh, put into um, two categories, two playlists. One will be color value composition and one will be pastel organization. And maybe even a third one, pastel products. Okay, this one kind of covers a lot of ground. All right, so you can see, <clears throat> if I get my shoulder out of the way there, if you look on the upper uh, top right, you see the warmer greens. If you look where my hand is now, you'll see the cooler. They are getting closer to blue as they, as they uh, cool off. If they're warmer, they're getting closer to yellow. So uh, you start to get it after you've been painting a while, but I'm gonna speed this up. And uh, this should be fun watching myself do this quickly because man, this took a lot of time and uh, I'm gonna enjoy speeding this up. Now you'll sometimes see me grab a, a tray or a palette there. Those are new pastels, NU pastels, and they're harder. And what I'm doing, my strategy here is I'm not only just going according to color and value, I'm going according to uh, softness and hardness too. I'm trying to basically make this a pastel box that has a little bit of everything. So I'm trying, it's, it's quite tedious too because I wanna make sure first and foremost is color and value, but I don't wanna have to have boxes of, of um, harder pastels and super soft pastels and super darks and super lights. So I'm trying to make this an all-in-one box. So I, I'm really thinking about it and uh, you'll see the different shapes of pastels. There's the, uh, the new pastels again. And uh, again, I like to break my pastels. I use them on their sides in a little shorter way. So um, I'm just kind of breaking a few of each color and, uh, and kind of uh, just uh, integrating it within the whole set. All right, so here's the point where it's gonna get fun for me to actually speed this up and watch myself do this very quickly rather than so laboriously and slow. Um, but again, uh, take note as to how these colors are moving uh, in conjunction with the color wheel. And uh, I really think this is gonna be helpful if you've, especially if you've never done this before, but even if you've only attempted this before. So here we go.
make a point here about neutrals. I actually have a, a box in my studio uh, or a little tray here like I have that has more of my neutral colors in it. And again, I'm trying to make my Howlman pastel box uh, all in one, so I want to integrate neutrals in there as well. Oh, it felt so good to get to this point where I knew I was just about to finish up. I wanted to point out too that um, you notice where the in the center section there where the little holes are, that's where the easel goes. I typically arrange it light if you know towards the front to dark, but it doesn't really matter that much to me. I grab pastels from wherever anyway, but if you like it light to dark, you want to flip-flop how I've done it there. And now here is the aftermath 
of uh, all of the remaining. Now these pastels, the, the ones that I broke off from the sets, are gonna have to now be integrated into my regular studio palette. So I'll have plenty of more pastels to fill that up. So that was a neat way you could take these sets, even the half sticks, and uh, make them work for your studio and your travel box. So I'm very excited about using this for the first time. I also want to show you, I made a little video footage of how I'm actually going to close it up. So here is the, the board that you have on for each side that it's going to be a little snug. You kind of have to press it down, but that foam is so spongy and soft. Um, I'm not in any danger of breaking any of those pastels and it needs to be tight so that it keeps them firmly in place. Oh, I'm so happy. I can't wait to use my Heilman box and I hope that was helpful. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so to keep more educational and fun videos coming your way. Happy painting!